I've been having some uh, dreams, uh, visions, but I've never seen something like that. Uh, I was in Rusty Bag one day. Uh, I, I, told, I told the prophets here. I the prophet. Said, I, what God showed me. is still frightening me. You know, uh, in fact, if I tell you that I don't understand the, the meaning of fear. But the, way, the way I was feeling, I had this fear. Because of what I saw. I will explain a little bit what I saw. Which is part of the message I want to preach to you. Um, what I saw was it's like I've been pleased to hear here in South Africa. So the moment I looked that side, I could see the whole America, but I'm in South Africa. So when the moment I look at this old America, remember I've got uh, these uh, visions of I want to take people to America. Even my daughter, I want to take her there. So the moment I look, the moment I look at that place, I was told that rapture has already happened. And then this will happen in the age, in the last day. In fact, I was told that uh, what we are seeing now is after rapture has happened. And I was told that you know there will be rapture. So rapture will come. So rapture will come. Will come. Now, there will be the last day. I saw what will happen in the last day. Listen. It's written in the Bible. In the Bible, when you read with letters, it's something that you won't understand. It's so simple to understand it. But it's something that will bring, you know, if you see it, you, you, are you can rather go and stay in the bush. Can you see, just to pray there. And, and, die, 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 and die praying there. If, if you see it live, you, sin cannot be mentioned to you. So, first time what I saw was, first time what I saw was, so when I was still looking there, I heard a sound. When I look up, I saw two rings. Rings stand for covenant. So those rings fall from heaven. But when they were coming here, they were becoming big, big, big. When they land here, they were like fire and spread and disappeared. In that vision, I was told that God had a covenant with us. And these are two rings. As it was two covenants. Remember the one of the law and, and the one that Jesus brought. So God will be saying, now, because I have taken my children, whoever is left there, I'm divorcing that person. So that will be the first thing that will happen, you know, whereby there will be like a divorce. Whatever you are experiencing here, it won't be like, no Holy Spirit, no pastor, no prophet. Nothing to do with God. <clears throat> the moment when I was looking, I saw the Lord. Then 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 I saw the L
Even now, you know, always I was telling Mama, I said, it's like this thing will happen now. All of you will run away. When I was still looking there, I was shown people around having cars. Properties. And then the moment when God say, now it's over. Those things were useless. I could see my cars there. I could see some people having beautiful things there. Useless and those things where people were looking around and then they, they could not even help them. When I was looking on people, how they are behaving, feeling so there way. was a great sound and the sky began to crack like ice. And you know, I could see it's like melting. When it's like melting, when people were looking up, they began to run away. And then now I had, now look. The moment when I looked like this, I saw hell. This hell was like a mouth of a person. And this America was like something that is entering inside the mouth. I saw America entering inside the mouth of the hell. And the moment it enters, it melts. Everything was melting. Here, when that mouth was open like this, the whole people here in Africa were running away. I was standing in South Africa here. But I could hear the heat of heaven. When things were happening in America, when it was coming, I could hear the heat of the heaven. And I'm hearing that is the last time now. And then I began to meditate the word of God. I found that even meditating the word of God is not easy. Repenting is not easy. No one will say, I want to repent. No one will pray and able to pray. It was a disaster. I look, I was given a chance to look at the face of the people. When they were running, I recognize some people here. And they were running from their, that mouth were coming like this. And then you could not see the head of the mouth, but you just see everything being shallowed inside. And what shocked me was just when I was standing looking at these people. Because some of them are Christians that I'm seeing. I look at their face. Was like a face that they've seen something that want to kill themselves. Like ah, and they were running away. Everybody was in fear that I've never seen. And I was told that when this day comes, no one will know that it has come. Somebody will be taken by surprise. So from there, I began to hear the Holy Spirit telling me that there is no church that is ready now for the coming of the Lord. Every church, they are ready for their own doctrine. Pastors ready for their congregation. No one is ready for the coming of the Lord. And then because of that, will be taken by surprise will be surprised that even people you are esteeming as the servants of God <coughs> it, it was really a frightening situation. 
Look here, even <inaudible> now in our churches. Lea na jo nongi kireke ncharuna. To talk about salvation. Ono tawabule la filakaro puluswang. For people to be saved. Ore ba tuvate ba puluswe. It's a story. Kitab. Even now there's no evangelist. Lea na jo nonga usina mutoa sama yanga wele cha evangelist. Even evangelists are prophets. Leba evangelist ma cha cha ba ipicha ba prophet. Because everybody will be focusing on himself. Ota ba lebele chita ba chaga ya lit noish. Focusing on things that they will end up living there. A lebele la din toche cha chile le ngota ta di tuel. Jesus is coming back. So I've been given a mandate. And in that mandate, is now the church will move from here to people. Everybody will have the grace to win other people. Coming to Jesus, say, hey, come to Jesus. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. That message is lacking. The mandate now is to preach that Jesus is coming. It's no more issues of saying, hey, come here, give offering, come here, do one, two, three. The time is finished. It's finished. So listen to this. On that mandate, I even explained to Mama that what I'm going to do now. I'm going to gather people. Because he's coming now. Those who are called and began to speak with them about winning souls. Winning souls now. No more winning money. Winning souls. Because you can see the issue that is happening around. Everybody wants to have a church so that he will have something to live with. Jesus is coming. He's around the corner. There's no church. I'm telling you now. I'm not kissing any church. I'm saying the way I was shown, there's no church now that is ready for him coming. Whatever we are trying to do is for our bellies. So I. <laughs> I was just looking at my pastors here. And I say, this is a lesson now. You know, I was even wishing I'm not a pastor when I look at that. Because the mandate that we are given, we have thrown it away. So I want to share with you about it. If your Christianity does not win someone to the Lord, it's not Christianity. Tell your neighbor, if your Christianity does not win someone to the Lord. It's not that Christianity. That one is not Christianity. Your Christianity must win someone around you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let's look what will happen. Let me just read. Just write the end of age. Mark 13.24 Mark 13, 24. I want to share with you. Mark 13. Mark 13. 24. 24. You can read to 33. Are you there? Little. But in those days, after the suffering and the stress, that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Amen. And the stars will be falling from the sky and the powers that are in the heavens will be shaken. That's what I was seeing. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and he will gather together his elect from the four winds from the farthest end of the earth to the farthest end of heaven. 28 says, now, 
Learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its branch becomes tender and it puts, it puts out its leaves, you recognize that the summer is near. Even so, you too, when you see these things happening, know for certain that he is near. Right at the door. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, this generation, the people living when the signs and events began, will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words Amen. will not pass away. Roreki ale bocha ditlo tswelela moloko wo o seshwe wa fela le go dimole le fase ditlo feta go me dipolelo tsa ka di ka seketsa feta but of that day or hour no one knows Amen. not even the angels in heaven nor the son in his humility but the father alone ge ile le tshatse leo ke le nako ya tsona ga go ye a tsebago le barongwa le le godimo be on guard and stay constantly alert for you do not know when the appointed time will come. Let's pray. Thank you Lord for your word in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. You know there are two or three things where we have read concerning the end of age. And one of the reasons why I want to share with you is because this is the time that before it comes, we make sure that many are saved. Where we have read is he will appear. But number one, the power of heaven will shake. I was, I was asking when the power of heaven shake. Where are we going to be? Number two, the, the angels will be sent to gather Christians. This shows that there's no compromising because heaven knows Christians. Number three, it's only the Father who knows the day. I just remember in the scriptures, Jesus said, what belongs to my Father, I have it. And he said, whatever that belongs to the Father, I'll make sure that you know it because the Father know, makes me to know that. But not in this day. No one will know this day. But the last of all, it summarizes the issue of because of that we must stay alert. If you don't know where you will be, because heaven will shake, if the angels will be sent to take, and if it's only the Father who knows the day, this tells us that we must stay alert. What has been written in verse 33, be on guard and stay constantly alert. And pray, for you do not know when the appointed time will come. You know we are living like we know what will happen. Many of us, we die having plans that we will never fulfill. This is the time that we become so much alert for his coming. I don't know if you are hearing that. If we read Matthew 13, just go 13 to 47. Matthew 13, 13 verse 47. 13 verse 47. I want to read for you there. Tell someone say, my friend, 
Be on guard. Stay alert. Verse 47 say what? Verse 47 ring you now. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet which was lowered into the sea and gather fish of every kind. And when it was full, Amen. they dragged it up on the beach and they sat down and sorted out the good fish into baskets. Amen. But the worthless ones, they throw away. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous. And throw the wicked into the furnace of fire. In that place, there'll be weeping and grinding of teeth over distress and anger. Amen. In other words, these are the people that when the Bible mentioned are Christians. You see, all of us, we are taken to church. But there are also wicked people in the church. I don't, I don't know if you're hearing that. But in the last day, it will need heavens to separate. Because we can't do it on our own. It will need a heaven. God will send angels to say this one is not worthy. So he's in the church. This one, he, he looked like a fish, but he's not a fish. I don't know if you're hearing me. So this is the time that we bring out reality of our Christianity before he comes back. I don't know if you're hearing that. If you look at this verse, it says, especially verse 15. Can you read aloud verse 15 in your Bible? It says what? 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 Listen to this. There's a scripture that shows that they will be thrown there, the one we are reading. But it talks about the worthless. Automatically, we need to check if our Christianity is, is worthful. Our Christianity, if it's worthful, it will bring a change around us. Some people will know Jesus because of us. Sometimes we are Christians who are worthless. We become selfish to ourselves. Our prayers are focusing on ourselves. But there's a day that is coming. The owner of heaven and earth will bring judgment to the earth. As I say, do you think you are, are you not worthless? What are you doing in the kingdom? We need to be Christians that are winning others. Can you ask your neighbor very closely? Is there anybody you brought to church? Or you are bringing many out of the church? Because you have got Christians who bring people to the church. To the body of Jesus Christ. They are, they are useful. And there are those who are worthless. Here the Bible says worthless. In other words, they are useless. They are just working against the plan of the living God. Jesus is coming back. I say Jesus is coming back. Listen to this. I was learning this, I began to realize that many of us in these last days we are searching for fame. We are so useful to ourselves. But when the kingdom of God looks at us, 
The kingdom of God sees us as useless people. When God looks at you, there's nothing that you are doing for the kingdom. When I was in Washington, I, I was shocked to see some people. And then they were standing very close to the capital. And these people were old people and they're Chinese. When you pass them, they are preaching about, hey, Jesus saves. Jesus loves you. Very close to the Cape And these people were Chinese. They even have some books. They are giving some people for I think we are becoming useless. Even if we are not existing, people can't even see us. Because even when we are existing, we are not even visible. Because we don't know the day. We need to be useful in the kingdom. You cannot enter the taxi, you keep quiet. If you know that he is coming, you will talk about it. Many of you talk about us better than Jesus. I mean, many of you know all these pastors, you know all these prophets, but you don't talk about Jesus. Jesus is coming back, no pastor will do anything. No prophet can save you. No apostle can save you. This is the time of standing up. You become useful. If you are standing up, you become useful in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I don't know if you are hearing me. Ask your neighbor, say, my friend. If it comes now, where are you going to spend your eternity? I mean, if it comes now, if he asks you, what is it that you have done for God? What are you going to say? If you, I mean, I was so shocked. I was in uh, Rustenburg. I'm telling you this thing so that you understand what I'm saying. I've been seeing this thing for many, many years. But, but when I was in Rustenburg, I heard my father-in-law talking about it. He said, "Look here. Because you are here." everybody here is holding services because you are here everybody is holding services I don't see people they want to come there but they are afraid of their and pastor and this pastor he can't go and out to reach out he captured this one but he doesn't want them to come out this, this is a shame that is happening in the Our church are useless we capture people to ourselves not to go when people are repeating is for ourselves not to Jesus and he said, can you see now? Everybody now. Every year, he began to show me. Say, there's a check. Can you see there? Can you see there? There is another service there. There is another one there. There is no unity. There is no unity. There is no unity. There is no unity. There is like, he's even asked me and say, me, how are you going to sit with these people in heaven? In my heart, I just say, heaven is very big. In my heart, I just say, heaven is very big. Everybody is working for himself. So, but if we know that heaven cannot accommodate such, we will start to be alert and we deal with our salvation, not to deal with other people. Tell me, my friend, deal with your salvation and stop dealing with other people because the Lord is coming there. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Ask your neighbor, say, my friend, where are you going to spend your eternity? In 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 7, from 3 to 9, from 3 to 9, chapter 3, from 3 to 9, 
and 10 to 15. Just read them. Le 10 to 15. It talks it's about mockers. Mokas will come. And these mokas will be mocking. They'll be talking about since our forefathers, where is he coming? You know, in the last days, you know, devil will use mockers. So that we live out our stand. So that we live out our stand. From our stand. And we follow useless things. The Bible says, mockers will come. When they come, they'll be coming to mock. Where are the promises of his coming? You are serving him. Let's see the sign of your serving. Because they are there to confuse. Your importance in the Lord. They are there to confuse your availability in the Lord. Listen to this. They are there to make you useless. They show you what is happening around you. So that you must never trust that something will come. Can I tell you this? The moment you hear people talking against what you believe in, just know that God is about to do something. Stand your grounds. Believe in him. Hold your salvation. Work it out with fear. And the Lord that you serve will show up. I love Job who said by the eyes that I have when no one cannot believe in what I believe I will see my salvation. There are some Christians who are here just wake out your salvation. Don't allow more to take over to confuse your stand in the Lord. Your soul is so important that You can lose all, but don't lose cast. You can lose money, lose friends, lose neighbors, but don't lose Christ. There are some people here already they are tired because people are making them tired. Hey, don't be tired. These are the last days. Our God is about to Show up. Our God is about to be visible. In the last days, people will must know that you are serving the living God. If you believe, shout hallelujah. I'm saying this because many of our Christian life is being affected because of lack of something. And we forget that he's coming. You know, uh, I will tell you this. Many of you, you don't know me. I have never valued anything I have. I have never valued anything I have as important. If I'm driving a car, it's not so better than the one I'm driving. If I'm driving it, you are driving the smaller or the bigger one. The issue is we are all driving cars. I don't know if you're hearing me. If you don't drive a car, you're supposed to enter somebody's taxi. You're not different with the one I'm driving. You're going to the place you want to go. There is nothing that makes you special because you are driving a car which is better than another. Why do you want to go to hell because you are believing in material? 
you can you can look at yourself you can judge yourself but the things that other people are hearing and you feel like God is not answering you it's not that God listen listen I have learned that it is better when you don't have anything but you have him you worship him better than any other we are beginning to have some attachments and some things that are not in our worship we are beginning to call ourselves as big servants of God because of the flow of money. And you find that before God we are not even counted. Look at the man at the cross who just said, hey Jesus remember me in the kingdom in the last minute and Jesus said tonight you will be with me in paradise. And someone who has born in the church study Phariseism Every position in the synagogue failing to understand the men on the cross. We are making mistakes by looking at what we have handled. We are making mistakes because we have learned things that other people have not learned. And we think we are so better than the people who have not learned. Listen to this. The Bible says, fear the By one the who destroy oh, even the soul in hell. This is the time of waking up. This is the time of understanding when you come to church, you are not coming for position. You are not coming because you want business to move. Some of you are not supposed to be here today. Your soul is not important, but your business is important. Some of you are not supposed to be here today. Because you are sick, that's why you are here. Listen, you can rather be Sick. But as long as you are going to heaven one day, you can rather be poor. As long as you are going to heaven one day, you can rather be rejected. But as long as you are going to heaven one day, our Christianity has moved now. Like I'm here now. You people you are here. I must beat my chest but the number of the people are sitting here. We are becoming so sluggish. So stupid because you are sitting here. We call you our members. We are no longer dealing with our salvation. It's not because of how many people are following us. That matters. When God comes to you, he comes to you checking you individually. Not what you have done, he knows better. He can see through. He can see beyond. Today, make sure that your soul is so important than all other things. You will seek the kingdom and all shall follow. I don't know if you are hearing me. Ask somebody to say, my friend, if today is the last day, when are you going to spend your eternity with the Lord? Are you going to spend your eternity with the Lord? Are you going to spend your eternity with the Lord? If you read in Jude 1, Jude 1, from 17 to 23, 17 to 23, Jude was trying to tell us about what the apostle spoke. He says the scoffers will have their ungodly desires. They will cause divisions and they are worldly minded. I don't know if you are hearing that. These are scoffers. Their passion is ungodly. You know, I was also asking myself, why now we have many prophets? I, I just realized that it was not that we have many prophets. It's what the Bible says. <laughs> that many of us will look unto prophets than him. And then I realized that we will end up worshipping them. Because the Bible says 
they will do big things. Mighty things for us to believe. And that's where division works of the flesh fighting will come. If you look at our church today, you realize that the question is why do we come to the church? Can you ask your neighbor that question? That is why we are meeting scoffers now. That is why we are meeting scoffers they will do things that you but never thought they could do. You forget what Jesus spoke. I'm sending you. Let the gospel be preached. And if you are doing this, no, I'm with you until to the end. When Jesus spoke about that, he was saying, it's only when you are going to share the word of God to your neighbor. I'm with you. When you are telling co-workers, I'm with you. You know, it says, the believers, it didn't say pastors. They will have signs that will follow them. Casting demon is not for Apostle Makaranisa or Prophet Humuhu. It's for the believers. There are signs and wonders that must follow those who share. Who share the gospel. I want to pray with you so that you change everybody around you for the hallelujah. kingdom of the living God. If you believe, shout hallelujah. If not, you are going to look at your life and judge it by other lives. Can you just ask your neighbor or you are watching, can you just ask the one you are watching how many people you brought to the Lord today? As is coming, how many? Because even those we bring to the Lord, when we bring them to church, we want to control them. The day we are tired of the church, we remove them. They follow us. We cause division. We don't understand why we are doing all this. If we brought them to church, why when we leave the church, we live with them? Listen to this. Our churches, if it breathes the Holy Spirit, we will have evangelists like Philip. Who can hear God speaking and carried by the Spirit of the living God. Philip was an usher. He was just an usher. Like Stefano. If we can reach that level, the church of God will prevail. But if not, what we are going to do We'll turn around all these prophets doing one-on-one. One on one here. One on one here. One on one here. Because we have got something we are fishing. We are not fishing to save other people. We are not fishing to save other people. Because we are saved. We want to be better than other people. Because we think people will understand us when we have got other things. Many of us today here, I believe God is raising you to reach where other people have never reached in the gospel. God can use your business to win many. God can use your employment to win many. God can use whatever you have to bring many out of the mouth of hell. And you send them where God wants them to be. From today, what you speak, 
Check what you are speaking. You are spending time talking things of the world. If you were sharing the gospel, it would help, help you. You know, like here in Tebisa. You people here, you are just hearing Christians criticizing each other. That's what Christians normally do when they don't have fire. But when we have fire, the moment when you say you're Christian, the congratulation. When we find the one who does not have Christ, we'll begin to explain about how Jesus saved us. How Jesus saved you. You will tell another one. Because you know the time is short. Stop talking things that won't bring credit on you. Talk about Jesus. Jesus. He will honor you tomorrow. Talk about Jesus. He will bless you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. I've been praying for pastors. I've been praying for pastors with all my heart. But this time, I want to spend time with people who are to win many to the Lord. There are many people here that God will use them from now. If God will direct you to certain people and you bring them out of fire for their salvation, the time is short. There's no more time to shine. There's no time now. If you try to shine, you won't shine. But when you win many, you will end up shining. Don't try to be something that you are not. Have the zeal now. Have the zeal. Listen to this. I can give you an example. If you want to win many, it's easy. You can go to people who are sitting. You okay, buy them teaching. food if you have money. You can see these people here are not no, Christian. No, 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 no. You just buy them food here. When they call you skoko, you say, no, 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 I'm not skoko. I'm doing this because of Jesus. You give them Jesus. Stop showing off. This is the time now of showing the fruit of reality. Win others to the Lord. If you believe, shout hallelujah. I'm saying this because our church today. Hallelujah. Amen. God gave me a car. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Your testimony here. Can you do it at home also? Can you go and do it at home? And you say, hallelujah, brothers and sisters, amen. amen. It's God who gave me this. Your testimony must not end here. You are insulting us. It does not edify us here. If it does not make other people to be edified outside. Your testimony is of winning other people to God. If God is blessing you, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. If you are saying hallelujah, amen here, let it be hallelujah, amen, high to all. The family must know you are Christian. Your friends must know you are Christian. If you believe, say amen. How many of you today want to live a holy life? How many of you you want to go one day to heaven? How many of you you want to live the life that God wants you to live? How many of you you want to change people around you? How many of you you are ready for salvation of many? If you are around, I promise you when you are busy becoming the hand of the living God, God will be his hand to you. God will help you. God will raise you as you are 
busy crying for others to come to God. God will lift you. God will raise you. This is your year. This is your year. If you start today, if you start today and begin to make sure around you, everybody fear God around you. I'm telling you, you are creating a right atmosphere. The angels will visit you. God will speak with you. He will direct you. This is your year to be a weapon of the kingdom. This is a year of bringing many to God. This is a year that you can make many people to know that Jesus is the Savior. This is the year. This is the year that people will run to church because, because you are the one who are inviting them. This is the year. Congratulations. Listen to me. What happened to me? I'm just giving this example so that you try it. For example, you really it's a my little league. The moment when I was say I was Benny. I was Benny. You know Benny. Benny to extent that I can't. When I look at you, I want to tell you about Jesus is Lord. I go live like in your corner. Tell us to wrap it. This brought me to Winnie Mandela here. I began to hate, make a house visit here. I was not having a church. 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 Others will insult me when I tell them about Jesus. I was not having a church. I was not having a church. I was not having a church. People like you. I knew I was ugly. I knew I was ugly. I was not presenting them. But I knew I'm presenting God. So when I reached there, when they chased, I could not even worry and blame them. I knew what God has spoken. That when he sent disciples, when they denied, he said they must do like this. As long as they've passed the case will come but it won't touch you I don't know if you are hearing me I turn around here I didn't even have the word I just read the word for myself but I go there and say sorry Jesus loves you Jesus loves you you can come to church he will help you if you have got questions, you can ask me. If, if I can answer you, I will take you to church to my pastor. He will help you. You cannot die here. Jesus loves you. Here, here people know I was standing around here before the mall came. Always standing around. You know what happened to me? From there, I was still working. From there, God began to send people to me. I will be standing like this and when a person is passing, I will hear follow that person and I will follow there and reach their story I want to speak with you about Jesus I'm here that I must speak with you about Jesus listen you must not value higher levels when you are failing on small levels sometimes you want to be big pastors where we can be seen but we are failing to have love for these ones who are down here you know, I will do that. I carry on moving. God loves you. I begin to win people to my pastor in the church. Pastor in the church. They come there, pastor will preach to them. My wife began to do it also. She had another woman. They turn around here. I'm turning around there. There's no time to waste. There's no time to waste. Christianity is not for you alone. It's 
he saved you for others. As he died for all of us. I don't know if you are hearing me. From there, I'll be talking. When I say, hey, you need to accept Jesus. And the person will begin to manifest. The power of God began. It didn't just start. Bam. God have to send you. You must have the heart to reach out. You must be insulted. I was speaking with you and hey, God loves you. Um, you know what, what to do? From there, God will say, can you go to Oliphant? You will meet whom who? Go there. The moment I reach there, I see the person is here. Sorry, my brother. God say, I must come to you. Because because of salvation. This, this, that. We are lacking that. What we need. We need to have majority. We need to be recognized. We are lacking simple things. You can start small. And God can lift you. And the small job. God consider it big. I prophesy someone who is here today. I say today, you are getting assignment of reaching out, 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 say this year, I'll reach out and win many. Let me give you an example. Sometimes we look at our church, we say, ah, ah, Okay, the church is growing or is becoming small. Let's take, we give each other assignment today. You come with two. You come with two. You come with two. Do you think the church will be accommodated? Well, look at ourselves. Today, when you come to church here, you sit in your mirror. You can't win anybody. You can't even hear God talking about someone. God won't, won't speak with you about people you don't love. If you want revelation about people, love them. Just love people. And if you love people, you will tell them the truth. You will win them to where you are. Because you know there is fire there. You will tell there is fire. Please come. Don't go there. Please come. Why do you allow your brother to die there? If you know you are a Christian. If we give each other assignment now. And say, I want to win my friend. The church will be so small. But you know what is happening now? When we come to church, I'm coming for myself. When I go out, I'm going to my friends. Can we bring our friends to church? That's why our friends will know we are serving God. Because your friends, they don't even know you are serving God. When you are outside, we don't see the difference between you and your friend. So today, you can receive anointing. You can receive anointing to win your friends, to win your parents, to win your.